their feet here in Phoenix. Under 10 seconds left. Douglas knocks down a three. We go to overtime. Big time shot by Pondexter. Phoenix survives at home. Amigos de ESPN, estamos otra vez en el US Airways Center, la casa de el, fi, el equipo de Phoenix, el Mercury, que venció en el primer duelo de la serie final en tiempo extra. Tienes que analizar ese primer duelo, pero sobre todo... Everybody, Terry Gannon, along with the former WNBA and collegiate head coach, Carolyn Peck, there is a... Feeling here in Phoenix that the Mercury could play even better than they did in game one, which is a bit of a scary thought, and that Indiana maybe played their best game and still lost. Do you agree with that? And what adjustments will we see here in game two, Carolyn? Well, I don't think that the Phoenix Mercury are going to make that many adjustments. They're going to do what they do, that up-tempo style, getting up and down the floor. It's the Indiana Fever that are going to make the adjustment, and the biggest adjustment is going to have to come from their star, Tamika Catchings. See, she only had eight points in game one that she has the responsibility of guarding Diana Taurasi but coach Lynn Dunn has a few more assignments for her she's got to guard Taurasi without getting into foul trouble she's got to get to the free throw line rebound that's it right uh, play the three and the four <laughs> get the popcorn sell the ticket I mean there's a whole lot of stuff she needs to do worn out listening we'll see if uh, Indiana could be worn out after going up and down the floor in game one our starting lineups have not changed. Same starters for both teams that we saw in game one. Tully Bavalacqua had 14 points in the first half, didn't score in the second half. Douglas, a big game. Catching's got to be better. Ebony Hoffman, 27 points. Tammy Sutton Brown, maybe a little better on the defensive end in game two they need from her. Tamika Johnson, Kathy Pondexter was big in overtime. Tarazi, Nicole Willingham inside, and Tangela Smith, who's another one who can step out and shoot the three-pointer. She led the league in three-point percentage this year. So we're just about set for game two. Best of five, the first two games here. Then we go to Indianapolis for game three and game four, if necessary, and back here to Phoenix for game five, if necessary. Underway, Subwa, Michael Price, and Roy Gobain, the officiating crew, in Phoenix tonight. And Terry, the one thing that I've got to keep an eye on is the rebounding. I think it's going to be the battle of the boards. That's going to be the team that will control the tempo. Phoenix won that matchup in game one. Lynn Dunn said we shouldn't be out-rebounded by this team. In fact, the Fever only had six offensive boards in the game. Bevel Aqua with the miss. Katie Douglas ran it down, did not go over and back. So a fresh shot clock, and Douglas fires for the first time, and she nails it for the first time. Well, she's picked up where she left off as far as regulation goes in the end of game one when she hit that three to send the game into overtime. Pondexter has it go off her hands. Slow start in game one, Kathy Pondexter. And Lynn Dunn certainly aware of the firepower that Kathy gives you. Lynn in her second season as the Fever head coach. Both coaches wired for sound tonight. You watch how the Phoenix Mercury, they will get the basketball in the paint, but Terry, it's to kick out for a three-point shot most of the time. Willingham up and in off the glass. Laco, a sixth-year player from Auburn, always near the top or at the top in the league in terms of field goal percentage. He shot 53% from the floor this year. Catching strong to the hole, the reverse lay-in. Good look from Catchings. We saw very little of that in game one. What Lynn Dunn wanted to make a catch to do was establish herself attacking the basket instead of selling for jumpers. That helps her to get into the flow, the rhythm of her game. First turnover by the Mercury. Tarazi throws it out of bounds. And it's a three-point lead for Indiana. They started strong in game one as well. Remember, they had a double-digit lead in the first quarter on Tuesday night. Well, what Indiana was successful with in game one was in the attack mode. When they started settling for jumpers, missed shots, that allows Phoenix to run. They free up catchings off the heel. Bevilacqua runs it down in the corner. Again, rebound, offensive yep. rebound, second chance opportunities. Sutton Brown the screen, so there's the switch, and Smith trying to guard Douglas on the perimeter. Bevilacqua throws it right to Tarazi. They had a mismatch inside, couldn't take advantage. Tamika Johnson can hit the three-pointer when left open. She was sixth in the league this year in three-point shooting.
Ebony Hoffman, who had 27, a career playoff high. Catching the spin. Hoffman steps back, left to open. Tarazi a little bit late. And you got to know, Corey Gaines talked about the fact that, hey, we can't leave her open anymore. Well, he said he was going to make the adjustment. Yeah, he thought she could shoot the ball, but you got to give up something. So in game one, they did. She proved she could hit it consistently. So now he's going to play a little more attention to her. Douglas on the run ahead of Tarazi and loses it out of bounds. <laughs> You know, when Tammy Sutton Brown has a mismatch down low, there's no way that Indiana should throw the ball away right there. You've got to get the ball to Tammy Sutton Brown down low. The switch. Bevilacqua caught on Pondexter and no match at all. Cappy takes it right down the lane for an easy lay-in. The fourth-year player from Rutgers and a first-team All-WNBA player. Douglas, who likes to go left, you know it well. You were her coach in college. Sutton Brown lost it out of bounds. It'll stay at this end. The one of the things Lynn Dunn addressed was the on-ball screen. Tammy Sutton Brown actually was in the right position that time, and what the guard defender, I believe it was Katie Douglas, was supposed to do is not allow her to use that screen. So it wasn't necessarily wasn't Sutton Brown's fault. No, that time. it wasn't her fault that time. She's supposed to force her to the baseline, didn't do it. Catchings taking Tarazi hard to the glass and gets the roll. So Tamika more active on offense early in game two. Well, I think so much was made of having Tamika Catchings guard Diana Tarazi that that was what Tamika Catchings was only focused on. It looks like tonight, now she's focused both defensively but on the offensive end as well in the attack mode. Tamika Johnson giving up a lot of size, matched up with Catchings. Hoffman, Willingham not out on her. You got to get a hand up. I mean, right now, the way she's playing, she's as dangerous as anyone. Douglas assigned to Pondexter. Tarazi. Diana Tarazi, the leading scorer in the league this year at 20, in the, 20 a game in the MVP. She was named that yesterday. They go right back to Hoffman. Tough shot, but the foul called on Phoenix. But you see, Tamika Ketchings, she's active, and she's got the mentality of attacking the basket, and she's not just selling for jumpers, but she's getting two feet in the paint, and she's going up strong. Foul on Lako Willingham. Rebecca Lobo and Heather Cox are with us as well. Rebecca, what do you have? In talking to Tamika Catchings, what do you have to do differently? She's kept saying, I have to stay on the court. She's very focused on not getting into foul trouble. She said she became too conscious of her fouls in game one, and so she was a little hesitant. She said, that's not my style. I have to get more shots. I have to attack the basket. That's obviously been her focus the first few minutes of this quarter. So Rebecca will be keeping track of the fever and listening into the huddles. Heather Cox, the same, over on the Phoenix side. But Ebony Hoffman, 14 of 16 from the floor so far in the finals. Well, she was 12 of 14 in game one, and look, she's looking to put it up tonight. On Dexter from Tarazi in the clear by Ketchings. High into the air for that one. Tammy Sutton Brown, maybe no one doing that better right now in the WNBA than her. That was great positioning on. Tangela Smith established early. Willingham up and under. The help was late from the weak side. The co with a couple of buckets so far. Red hot shooting already. Now you can look at it a couple of ways. I mean, there are some on the negative side. Is another easy lay at Sutton Brown will go to the line and a chance for a three. Maybe the defense. Not what you're going to see from a Detroit or you know, Indiana is supposed to be the defensive team. They gave up 120 points to Corey Gaines's club last night, but the shooting's been great so far. After all, they are playing for a championship. It is the WNBA Finals. We'll leave it all on the floor. ESPN's presentation of the WNBA Finals is presented by Adidas. Impossible is nothing. And in part by IHOP. IHOP's gone NFL. Try the all-pro lineup only at IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy. Out here in Phoenix, red-hot shooting 
again to open up game two. Indiana shooting 70 percent. Phoenix shooting 63 percent and the Fever with a five point lead. What's Phoenix doing offensively though that uh, Indiana's having trouble with? Well they're running off the on ball screen and the adjustment that Indiana made was getting Tammy Sutton Brown in the right position. She stepped up in the right position that time but it's a team defense. Everybody's got to rotate. This time Tully Bevilacqua is supposed to be forcing Kepi Pondexter to the baseline allows her to go middle. That's not Tammy Sutton Brown's fault. No, so everybody has an assignment and you have to pay attention to that detail. But they are attacking Tammy Sutton Brown. I mean, the person she's guarding is setting that screen. They did it throughout game one and now they're opening up doing the same thing here in game two. Sutton Brown at the free throw line offensively. She averages 10 a game. She had 19 in game one. Well, and I like what Sutton Brown is doing early in this game is she is establishing herself in the paint. She's playing a lot stronger in this first quarter than she did in the first quarter of game one. Keisha Swanye off the bench now for Phoenix. Tarazi air ball. Nice save from Pondexter. Over to Diana Tarazi. You can't buy it. Here comes catchers. As they look to run and take that first available shot, Tamika buries a line drive jumper just inside the arc. So Indiana continually taking that first open look. Well, the coaching staff talked to Tamika Kitchens at shoot around and said, get your rhythm by attacking, then your outside game will open up. And that's exactly what's happening. Kisa Swanye, the early long three, cleared by Sutton Brown. The question is, though, can they continue to play at a pace like this? Even if you're getting a good look on that first, oh, six or seven seconds in the shot clock, Douglas, hard baseline, and she's fouled. She'll go to the free throw line. You don't want to look up at halftime and see the game in the 50s again. But you see Tamika Catchings, she attacks in and then creates space for the step back. She's in the rhythm with her shot. She established early attack and getting all the way to the rim. Now she's got that confidence and she's in a flow. But Terry, you were talking about the, the pace of the game and the tempo. When you watch the Indiana Fever go against the Detroit Shock, that was a physical team. Lynn Dunn said that they just physically beat you up. And they had to play that team back to back and they were able to pull out two wins. That gives the Indiana Fever confidence that they can keep up with this tempo. But the style that Corey Gaines likes to play, I mean, his whole philosophy, Paul Westhead's philosophy is go ahead and score quickly. We don't care. We're going to go quickly down to the other end and hit a three. But you know what's happening is if Indiana's attacking, they're getting to the free throw line. That's stop and play, which Kevin Cox talked to Corey Gaines with. They're not comfortable with that kind of with that kind of play with it stopping that way. Tough to catch that one. Out of bounds. Back to Corey Gaines' squad. Second year coach. Who played collegiately in Westwood. At UCLA for three years and then transferred across town to Lowell and Marymount. Played for Paul Westhead. There's a team with Hank Gathers, Bo Kimmel. They average about 110 points per game in college. 40 minutes. Nicole Oldie, who's come off the bench to the left hand with the miss. And Indiana takes control. They've hit their last five shots from the floor. The double on Hoffman. They try to swing it. Had catchings and missed her, but Katie Douglas, the fadeaway, rattles it home. Won a national championship back in 1999 with Purdue. And imagine what she would have done had she had a good coach. Well, you know what? I think her coach was pretty good. And uh, in 99, won that coach and the Purdue Boilermakers a championship it, in 99. It was you on the bench that year. Tarazi will go to the free throw line. She's fouled on the move. First team foul on Indiana. Tammy Sutton Brown picking it up. Oh, look at you back then roaming the sidelines. How tall was that hair? Was that awful? So Katie Douglas and the Boilermakers in that championship game, 62-45 over the Dukies, the Blue Devils. Well, and it was a tremendous game, and Katie Douglas started that game. She was 0 for 7 in the first half, and we go into the locker room, and she's like, okay, you know, what do we do? And I was like, it's because you're emotional. Use it. And I'm thinking inside, man, if she didn't start hitting some shots, we're in trouble. <laughs> but Ukari Figs started hitting big shots. 
Stephanie White stepped up big, and you got to have a big three for a championship, and I did with Katie Douglas and Stephanie White and Ukari Figs. You had that confident exterior and going nuts on the inside. 32 and one your record that year. 34 and one. 34 and rock one. Yeah, the sta Stanford got us with no time on the clock, but we won't talk about that. One. Tarazi with a block. That didn't happen in college, did it? Rarely. Penny Taylor, who's just come off the bench, played a huge role in game one, and she starts the same way in game two. Taylor had 23 in that win on Tuesday. Catchings to the left hand. Gets tangled up with Tarazi and helps her up. And helps her up. Swanye, not this time. Tried to find Duana Bonner, who's come off the bench, a rookie from Auburn, who is the sixth woman of the year in the WNBA. This is the ultimate sign of sportsmanship. First, Tarasi wanted to make sure that she didn't hurt Tamika Ketchings, and then Tamika Ketchings reaches back and helps Tarasi up off the floor. You mentioned in the open all the different things that Lynn Dunn is expecting of Tamika Ketchings. Do you think she goes to her bench to give a little rest more tonight? I don't think Tamika Ketchings needs rest. She is a competitor, and her teammates call her animal. Like on that play, the drive, the hesitation, and the bucket, she'll go to the free throw line. She is in the mentality of attacking the basket, going strong, getting the shot fake up, Penny Taylor off her feet, and drawing the foul. Taylor's first and the fourth team foul. And again, a 10-point lead for Indiana. A reminder, if you want to be part of the action, check out WNBA Finals Live on ESPN.com and WNBA.com. WNBA players and ESPN analysts will be commenting on tonight's game. See what they're saying and add your voice to the conversation at WNBA Finals Live. An 11-point lead for the Fever here in the first quarter. Terry, you ask about the tempo, and Lynn Dunn has already gone to her bench, putting in Jessica Davenport to give a rest to Ebony Hoffman and Tammy Sutton Brown. Jessica Moore, who's come off the bench for Lynn Dunn, picking up her first, the fifth year player from UConn. Hoffman to the bench. So Pondexter at the line. Tappy, an 88% free throw shooter. Huge effort in the second half and in overtime a couple of nights ago. One of the things that the Phoenix Mercury used in game one after free throws was the 2-2-1 three-quarter court press and then dropping back into a zone defense. Here it is. Broken easily and catching stopped by Taylor. Moore posting up Rian January, who played her college ball at Arizona State. First look for her, and that's a three-pointer. January, just a rookie, and the number six pick overall in the draft. Under a minute here in the first. Taylor hit hard and gets the roll. Jessica Moore, her second foul. It's the on-ball screen action. Penny Taylor, as soon as she catches it, she's putting her head down. She's driving to the middle. And Jessica Moore needs to get there a step sooner to stop that penetration by Penny Taylor. They will hit some shots. But you shake your head and you go, how'd that go in? Taylor does it. Tarazi does it. Tamika Dixon now into the game for the first time, a 13th-year veteran out of Kansas, and catchings to the bench. The Taylor, who had ankle surgery this spring, didn't join the team until midway through the year. In fact, late this summer. 14 games during the regular season. Big part of this run. You know, with Penny Taylor coming late in the season, she's well-rested also. And she's playing fresh, and Corey Gaines said she's even going to get better because she's gotten herself into this tempo game shape. Has a ring already with the 2007 Phoenix Mercury. They're in the finals for the third time. Indiana here for the first time. Douglas left open. Taylor fouled in the backcourt. 
Breon January on the reach. So 34.8 left here in the first and the 15 foul. So Penny Taylor will go to the line. No. Oh, Douglas. I mentioned Indiana maybe feeling a little pressure down one game to none, but maybe Phoenix too. You think you got a sweep at home? This the second game, best of five. We go to Indianapolis for Game Three Sunday. WNBA shoot around at 3:30 Eastern. The game at 4 o'clock Eastern. And then, if necessary, Wednesday in Indianapolis, and then back here Friday for Game Five. Should we need it in Phoenix? Two stars on the bench. They've already put on a show as it is. They were they got a slow start because of foul trouble in game one. But they've given the fans something to cheer about. A lot of fun basketball already. Tarazi, though, just one of five so far. She was five of 17 in the first game. They extend the zone. Five on the shot clock. Davenport off the glass, a little strong, a chance for Phoenix. Ten seconds is plenty of time for this team. Swanye, inside out they go. Nope. So Indiana, another solid first quarter, and they have the lead on the road. 31-24, the Fever leading. The Phoenix Mercury, long way to go in this one, though. Tamika Catchings already a... Welcome back to Game 2 of the WNBA Finals. I'm joined now by Indiana head coach Linda and coach. Tamika Catchings already has more... ...important was it for her to assert herself it's early. important, and that she's not in foul trouble. She's attacking the rim with a lot of confidence, so it's a huge plus for us. How do you keep this going offensively for three more just quarters? Just keep attacking. Just keep attacking. You know, use our bench and keep attacking just like they do. All right, Coach, thank you. Terry? All right, Rebecca, thank you. Tamika Catchings already with 11 points in the game, Carolyn. Well, she is establishing herself first getting to the paint. She has her head up. She is finding uh, any gaps she can to get into the paint. That's what the coaching staff talked to her about early. She did not do that in game one. In game two, now she is aggressive. So you're listening to Lynn Dunn talk. She's 32 years of experience as a head coach on that sideline. She was in the college game for some 20 Five years, 542 wins on the collegiate level. And did you need me to translate? That, 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 <laughs> At times. That, that uh, southern twang from Tennessee. Backdoor cut from Taylor to Johnson. And it's a five-point game. Penny Taylor has scored eight of the last 12, and the assist on that one for Phoenix. Now, against this Rover defense, what Indiana needs to do is get the ball inside. What Lynn Dunn said was make... Diana Trossi foul you, but Tammy Sutton Brown's going to have to go up stronger than that. They come right back at him, though. Tangela Smith runs ahead of everyone. That's what Phoenix wants to do the entire game. The run on misses, the run on makes. But inside right now, in that defense, the rover they call it, it is Tarazi who's got to go from the blocks all the way up, almost to the top of the key. Right now defending Sutton Brown. Tamika Dixon buries a deuce, though. Foot was on the line. Here comes Taylor, blocking foul. And she'll go to the free throw line. The foul, the first on Tamika Dixon. No time to high five or congratulate yourself. No, there's no celebrate. When you score, you need to get back. But you have two point guards on the floor right now. You have Breon January and you had Telly Bevilacqua. One player needs to go pick up the point guard in transition. The other one needs to get back and cover deep until everybody else can get back and get matched. Lynn Dunn just took January out along with Tamika Dixon. Taylor the miss. Doesn't miss often. A 90% free throw shooter. Bevilacqua who won a title with Seattle back in 2004. Then with Indiana since running the point guard spot. Here's that pressure off of the free throw. Well, and what this is to do is to make Indiana not have a full amount of time to set their offense. 
talked about how much his ass of catchings. Here it is again. Tarazi asks to guard the post players down low. This time she ties up Tammy Sutton Brown. So it's her and Willingham. The Willingham will be a part of the jump ball. Well, and Phoenix is ready. They know that there's a mismatch in size with Diana Taurasi and Tammy Sutton Brown. So as soon as the ball is coming inside, another Mercury player is coming for the double team to give her help. Tipped up twice by Willingham. Sutton Brown never jumped the second time. So the lock what takes it away. You're looking to find the seams in this defense. Are there seams? There are seams. Phoenix ball. But you're only going to find the seams in a zone when you get ball reversal. You've got to exercise some patience now, which is something that Indiana's not really used to. You've got to get the ball from side to side, not just one pass and in. Phoenix on a 10-2 run. Douglas trying to guard Taylor on the block. They get it to Penny, double team. Smith, catchings came out to change the shots. It'll stay at this end. And a fresh 24 on the clock. Willingham back to the basket. Can't buy it. Good defense by Sutton Brown. Now, Indiana, one of the things they'd like to do, they don't feel, they feel that Phoenix really doesn't want to play defense for any extended period of time. So if they don't get that initial look, they'll try to go side to side and use the shot clock. Douglas strong to Rozzi high to clear it. But the problem is right now is Indiana's one and done. They're not getting any second chance opportunities against this zone. Good ball movement. Taylor, the payoff at the end. That's a three-pointer. And it's a one-point game. And he's got 12 already. Douglas inside out to catchings. Last couple of shots by Tamika were line drive jumpers. Tawazi off balance and in. Phoenix with the lead. Timeout, Indiana. The first lead of the game for the Mercury, and they love it here in U.S. Airways Center. Well, and it's a lot to do with Diana Taurasi, superstar step up big when you need that basket. They started from behind, but as long as you've got Diana Taurasi on your team, hey, you're still in it. The Phoenix Mercury care about their community. Yesterday, continuing a finals tradition, the WNBA, Toyota, and the Mercury officially opened a new reading and learning center at Lincoln Downtown YMCA. The new center featured a library filled with hundreds of books, a game room, and a technology lab to provide youngsters with a safe place to learn and play after school. The WNBA leading, inspiring, and creating positive change. The president uh, of the WNBA, Donna Orander, in attendance tonight. It's one point lead for Phoenix, and Donna is with Rebecca Lobo right now. Yes, Carrie, I'm joined by the president of the WNBA. Donna, game one was the best WNBA game I've ever seen. What were you thinking as you watched 236 points being scored? I was thinking so many things. How fantastic is WNBA? the Tulsa ownership group this week announced Nolan Richardson as their coach. What do they have to do to secure a franchise in Tulsa? I, I think they're working on it. I, I had everyone in Tulsa tonight. I know they have a big event uh, at Southern Hills. Um, they're generating momentum, sponsorship. They're selling tickets. They have their own internal system in terms of deciding when they'll go ahead. But uh, I know Tulsa wants to be on the map. And uh, the WNBA gives them a great way to be national, international. Good stuff. Is it more
Wiley reported that you're one of the lead candidates for commissioner of the LPGA. What is the status of that? Listen, the WNBA Finals, you just said it, the best finals and playoffs we had in our history. We do it because we have an unbelievable team who works so hard at the league, at the team level. I am so fortunate to represent them and be a part of their team. And I just can't wait to see the rest of the game tonight. All right, Zona, thank you very much. You can ask the question, Terry. Uh, thank you. Re Rebecca, you gave it your best shot. One point lead for Phoenix. Tarazi trying to extend that. No, nope. Douglas Clitter. You know, Donna mentioned the, the great crowd tonight, and we do. The upper deck tonight, it's Alvin Gentry, the head coach of the Suns, who paid for the upper deck seats, and they were handed out. You had to go to the box office and say, Alvin Gentry sent me, and you get in. Well, and they have come. Not only if they were free or he bought them, the fans have filled the seats. Hoffman in, out, back in again. Ebony continues her role. The lead back to the fever. Johnson in the lane, lost it. They're going to call the foul on Brian January, and that's her second. You know, looking ahead to game three, they have already sold over 15,000 tickets in Indianapolis for that one. There's great excitement about this Indiana Fever team. Especially winning the Eastern Conference Finals there and the big crowd that came out for Game 3 against Detroit. They're waiting and ready to, to support this Indiana Fever team once they get back to Indianapolis. Big effort already tonight by Penny Taylor for the Mercury. Heather Cox. It's not a coincidence that the Mercury are back in the finals with Penny Taylor on the floor, just like in 2007. And it's not a coincidence that without Penny Taylor, the Mercury were the first defending champion to miss the playoffs in 08. The reason Taylor decided to skip the season to prepare for the Beijing Olympics and then had a horrible ankle injury and reconstruction surgery. And it was not a foregone conclusion that she would return in this year. In fact, Diana Taurasi told me it took her six months of begging to get Penny Taylor to come back to the season diana added when she's on this team we are at the finals level it is no secret the crowd knows it we knows it we know it they keep roaring every time penny comes in and every time penny's been in, in the finals so far she's sparked a run now annie myers the gm of uh, phoenix a big part of that and the, the correspondence with the players back and forth and so many play in the offseason wnba offseason overseas together and they stay in touch catchings with the miss cleared by bonner well, I tell you, if Diana Taurasi were to call me and ask me to come back to play, I'd join her team. She hadn't called you? Smith, the three. Angela makes it a four-point game. There's Annie. Hall of Famer herself. Bonner trying to stay with Hoffman. That's been an impossible assignment through a game and almost a game and a half now. Well, she's staying in the attack mode. Not just settling for jumpers. Sutton Brown late getting there around the screen, and they have worked that repeatedly. She never stepped up to stop Taylor. You have to go early on Penny Taylor because she's putting her head down and going straight to the basket. Saw the edge bench point wise going to the Mercury. That was the same in game one. Douglas will go to the free throw line. Well, the game plan for the Indiana Fever is to attack off penetration. And Ebony Hoffman is doing exactly that. But when you've got Penny Taylor on the floor, on ball screen, post players, you can't play that matador defense. You've got to step over, put your body in the line of drive. You cannot allow them to get all the way to the rim. Ebony Hoffman already with 10 points in the game. Tamika Catchings with 11. See, Douglas has seven now substitutions Jessica Moore comes in off the bench Sutton Brown goes to the bench and they talked repeatedly at shoot around this afternoon to Tammy Sutton Brown her teammates did about just that on the defensive end being more aggressive with the weapons that Phoenix Mercury have, it's a team defense. All five players have to be on the same page in order to defend this team. Foul on Indiana. Dangerous cross court, but Catchings picking up her first. One to give, one foul to give. 
Yeah, so three team fouls on Indiana. They do have one to give. Only one team foul on the Mercury so far in this quarter. Cross court to Tarazi. Cold start for Diana again. Two for eight, but blocked at the other end. So she misses here, blocks the shot at the other end. Guess who at this end? Good dish down to Bonner. Uh-uh. January, right by Diana Tarazi. What a move by the rookie. Now this pace, though, is more suited for Phoenix getting up and down the floor. They happen to be missing shots or turning the ball over right now. It's not something that would play in the favor of the Indiana Fever. If that's on Moore, that's her third. Okay. Nope, I'm going to call Ebony Hoffman for the foul. Diana gets so much credit for her offense, but check out the hustle on this defense and the block from behind on Jessica Moore. Wow. Couple of blocks by Tarazi at uh, the other end so far. Now, if you're Corey Gaines, Taylor throws it right to catch it. If you're Corey Gaines, and no matter what, if you look up at halftime and you're playing the game in the 50s, he's happy. He's wearing you out. It's what they do. January knocks down a jumper, and that was a three-pointer. Indiana with a three-point lead. Well, Corey Gaines, he really believes that he, by the time the fourth quarter comes, his team is better conditioned than anybody else he'll play against. So do you think as Taylor throws it away, do you think it's a mistake for Indiana to continue hey. to play at this pace? I have watched teams try to slow them down, and they get beat 30. Katie Douglas and the Fever get back to our discussion about pace of the game. Who knows? You're right. If you hold the ball and you make them play the entire shot clock, maybe you lose some aggressiveness yourself and an ability to really get an open look. But, boy, by the fourth quarter, we'll see if, uh, if Indiana can get up and down the floor. The other thing that you do when you're trying to execute an offense just for the purpose of using a shot clock, you may be passing up good shots. True. And then you take maybe the second best shot or you turn the ball over, which does play into the favor of what Phoenix likes to do, which is run. First fall on Duana Bonner. Davenport to the left hand. Nice little jump hook over Nicole Oldie. Jessica Davenport, the third-year player out of Ohio State, two-time Big Ten Player of the Year there like this matchup. Catching Zentarasi going head to head. Blocked from behind and saved. Good recovery defensively. Davenport going back to work on Oldie. Nowhere to go. Tipped out with only four seconds on the shot clock. Angela Smith back in, Tamika Johnson back in for Corey Gaines. They'll call the timeout, though, with a minute 37 left until the break. What do you make of Tarazi's start the last couple of nights? I have five of 17 in game one, now two of eight. Is it all Tamika Catchings? I think it has a lot to do with Tamika Catchings and what in the Indiana Fever have caused Diana Tarazi to do as of late, especially in the second quarter, is be more of a passer. Whenever she gets the basketball, she's attracting two defenders and a lot of attention on the floor. Do you hear me? Everybody heard me. You're gonna either side, you're gonna step back in for the shot. Play it, all right? Or they may cut either way. You play it. On offense. On offense. Give me last leg, last leg, all the way through. All the way through. That means you come and set it. You come off, you die, you're going to come up. All right? Come on. Corey had a run in the league, too. Played five years, five different teams in the NBA, was a point guard. The way he really learned Paul Westhead's system was the fact that he was a point guard, had to know everybody's responsibility on the floor. Now, you were a point guard, right? Uh, more of a, I, I like to shoot more you, than pass, to yeah. be honest. Rebecca Lobo, she did Wikipedia and said that you were a shooting guard, but you look at the floor differently as a point guard. You're facing the basket where all the rest of the other four players have their back to the basket, so it's a different view, so it's good for a point guard to see it from all angles. At least 
side look at the basket. Yeah. And on the screen goes January. Tip Hondexter to Douglas. They don't get the shot off. They have four to get it off, and they don't. By Indiana, Phoenix had a four-point lead, but they have the basketball now. Inside out to Smith, Davenport late, and that is a three-pointer. So many weapons on the perimeter. Cannot be late on the three-point shot on anybody against the Phoenix Mercury. To Rodzi on Douglas now as they swing it. Back to Katie. Five on the shot clock. Huge mismatch. Good look to Davenport and the foul on Smith. But set up, you're right, from that mismatch with Tamika Catchings. Well, Catchings has a mismatch, so she requires help. When the help comes over, Davenport does a great job of slashing to the basket and getting herself a potential three-point play. Angela Smith picking up her second. She on the fever and the mercury in style. Log on to WNBAstore.com now. Largest selection of WNBA gear there. Jerseys, t-shirts, hats, plus free U.S. shipping on orders over $65. WNBAstore.com. One store, every team swatted away. Still tough for Diana Taraji to score. Davenport the block. Catchings lost it. There was a foul there. Tamika and the foul on Catchings. So that's her second. And she's gone through this first half. One of the goals was to get her to halftime, not in foul trouble. She got two. Yeah, she had to make a better decision to let that go. But I think that was a frustration foul from not getting called for the contact when she was on the offensive end. She's got 11 points in the first half. That's more than she had the whole, the entire whole game of game one. She had that in the first quarter, too. Christina Worth, the rookie from Vanderbilt, off the bench. We haven't seen her in the finals yet. This is her first look for the Dunn. Second leading scorer in the SEC. She's a three-point threat. But this is an opportunity that Indiana's going to use the shot clock. They want to have the last shot with only 24 seconds left. Basically the same shot clock, game clock. Fractions of seconds. So in game one, they waited a little bit too late to get started. Catchings with Tarazi Honor. There's that matchup at the other end. The fadeaway, no. Tough shot for Tamika Catchings, but a good first half for the defensive player of the year and for the Indiana Fever. Indiana on the road with a three-point lead, and the game's in the 40s. Remember game one, it was 56-53. Phoenix with the lead. That has turned around. Heather? Thanks so much, Terry. Joined by Penny Taylor, 14 first half points. Penny, but you guys only have two fast break points in the first half. Do you have the pace and tempo that you need to win this game? Yeah, it hasn't been as uh, the fast pace that we want. We want to try and pick up that pace. They're playing really good aggressive defense. Uh, we're, we're playing more half court um, offense at the moment. We really want to get the rebounds run out and, um, and pick up the pace. All right, Penny, thanks so much. Let's head over to Rebecca. Thank you, Heather. Tamika. You have been dominant on both ends of the floor. What has been different for you tonight? So I think just being more aggressive and uh, getting to the basket more. You know, I think uh, as of like the last quarter, obviously they started keying more on me. So, you know, just trying to pass the ball out, create more for my teammates, and uh, move the ball around. Similar pace to game one. What will be the keys to a different outcome? Keys keep attacking the basket. You know, I think we went away from it last game. You know, when Jessica Davenport got in, just throwing the ball down low. Tammy, she does a great job for us down there. So just keep attacking. All right, thank you, Tamika. Terry, key for her, only two fouls this first half. You're exactly right. And in double figures already, she only had eight in game one. Coming up, the IHOP halftime report. Rebecca's interview with Katie Douglas and also first half analysis. Indiana heading to the locker room. Very happy. Catchings with 11. Hoffman with 10. Penny Taylor doing the work for Phoenix, though. She has 14 so far in the game. Indiana with a three-point lead here in game two. Take it up another notch.
match with your own ball defense because they run it a lot, we're going to win the ball game. But we have to be able to do that because it's so much a part of our game. Bench, super job. Bree, Dab, excellent job. Or yeah. what was the moment of trouble? Just play them a little bit more. Go to the basket a little bit harder, finish our shots. But I know we're trying to pass on three bags. We've got to get back. Back here at the 2009 WNBA Finals, presented by Adidas, both coaches. Talking to their teams at the break. Some work to do for Corey Gaines and the Mercury. They are down by three. It's 48 to 45. Indiana, they're down one game to none in this best of five series. Terry Gannon back with Carolyn Peck. The one major adjustment you mentioned coming in for Indiana, get Tamika Catchings involved on the offensive end. They did that early. You know, she's more offensive-minded. In game one, it was all about guarding Diana Taurasi. In game two, it's about getting to the basket. And what they have asked her to do is to attack and you see she has even created space a little bump there with Diana Taurasi then she gets her head past Penny Taylor she sees that there's no help side or when it comes it's late she's able to put the ball in the hole and then watch this she is able to come out look at the high one for offense there's no help side so she's able to penetrate really go all the way under for the reverse layup she is following the game plan Lynn Dunn has laid out that's a great look everybody free throw line extended and the baseline wide open for catching who's in double figures with 11 so Rossi's got seven it's been a struggle for her though as we send it over to Heather Cox what'd you pick up during the break Heather well Terry it seems to be a theme developing for Phoenix Mercury and its stars in the first half Diana Taurasi and Kathy Pondexter combined just three of 12 in that first half and Diana Taurasi told me coming out of the locker room just like she did at halftime of game one this is ugly then she went and lit it up in the second half Corey Gaines said to get those two players better shots they need more tempo so the shots are in the flow once they're in the half court Indiana doubling them and they're not getting the shots now for more on the Indiana fever Let's check in with Rebecca Lobo. Thank you, Heather. I caught up with Katie Douglas, and she said Indiana just needs to continue to do in the second half what they did in the first. They did a great job on the rebounds. They disrupted Phoenix defensively, and they knocked down shots. And she said it's so much easier when you get contributions from a lot of people. Mentioned Jessica Davenport in particular, and she said when Tamika Catchings is play, plays like that, it makes everyone's job easier because her energy is contagious, guys. All right, Rebecca, thank you. We open up this second half. Tamika Johnson with the baseline jumper off the board, and it starts the break for Indiana. Now, Tarazi, the struggles offensively. She does have four blocks in the game now. In fact, six blocks by Phoenix, a, another finals record. We, we had 15 of those last night. Tangela Smith just picked up her third foul. Well, you looked at... When we had the open and the records that were broken did look like the Star Wars War story. It did. <laughs> the very first movie. Sutton Brown, a 75% free throw shooter. Tammy, the ninth year player from Rutgers, who is from Canada. Parents still live up in the Toronto area. Makes the two at the free throw line. You want to be part of the action? Check out WNBA Finals Live on ESPN.com, WNBA.com. Watch Diana Taurasi here and then go there for our analysts commenting on tonight's game. See what they're saying. Add your voice to the conversation at WNBA Finals Live. Inside out they go. Ebony Hoffman adds 10. She gives it inside and the miss cleared by Taurasi. Johnson stops, pops. Nope. Smith the rebound. Pondexter only has four in the game. Cappy with the miss. Another offensive glass. And Catchings gives it off to Bevilacqua. You know, remember in game one, Cappy Pondexter only had two points in the first half. Tonight she's got four. She exploded them in the second, as does Catchings to the left hand. She broke down the double team. She continues to stay offensive-minded, still attacking the basket, not settling for jumpers. Back door to Pondexter, taken away. Quick hands by Bevilacqua, but she lost it out of bounds. Terry, watch this crossover. This is nasty. Through the middle. Ooh, that's playing basketball. Had you speechless? It did for a moment. 
52-45, Indiana. Yeah. You know, that is a horrific call. That's not a reset, son. She tapped it. Hey, listen, she grabbed the ball. Oh, she didn't. She tapped Lynn Dunn, who was the head coach of the Seattle Storm for three years, saying, look, Tully Bevilacqua never had possession. They should not have reset the shot clock. And the official saying, yes, she did. So a fresh 24. Doesn't matter right now. Taken away by Hoffman. Ebony with Johnson back. The foul on Tamika Johnson. And a chance for a three-point play for Ebony Hoffman. Ebony Hoffman is doing everything. First she gets the steal, she's coming in transition, looks like a guard, and then leaps, goes around really, Tamika Johnson, able to draw the block call and go to the free throw line. Hoffman, who had 27 in game one, has 13 in game two. She only averages a little less than 10 points a game. There's the switch. The help on Pondexter goes right by Sutton Brown. They swing it to Johnson in the corner, halfway down and out. What the defense for the Indiana Fever is doing, though, they're rotating to make sure it's not Tarasi taking the shot. Make somebody else beat you. Bonner just held her ground. Seventh block by the Mercury tonight. Again, the quick hands. Bevel Aqua again this year on the all-defensive team. The rotating defense by the Indiana Fever, though. Foul underneath on the rebound. They're going to catch Tully Bevilacqua, and that's her first. So the only thing Phoenix is getting right now is a second look here and there. They're not getting that initial rush. Well, in the movement of the ball, Tarasi now really is a look at shot you first. Go. She's looking for making that next extra pass, which is taking the ball out of your superstar's hand. Yeah. And Diana Tarazi just 2 of 11 in the game to this point. Cappy Pondexter 1 of 4. When your big two offensive threats are shooting like that, you're going to be down. And they are by 9. Make it 8. But you know that run is coming at some point. If you're Lynn Dunn, I'm sure you've said in the locker room, look, guys, have patience because you know they're going to make a run at some point. Sutton Brown, they beat the pressure. Well, you cannot relax, though, with the pace of the game that Mer Phoenix Mercury play with. They can get right back in the game. They showed that in the second quarter. So you've got to put your gas on the throttle and keep doing what you're doing, attacking the paint. Hoffman picks up her second foul. Second team foul. What is he worried about? Not the way you want to open up the third quarter. Tarazi, off balance, gets the roll and in. Now, sometimes a bucket like that can get you going, too. Catching cleared by Tarazi. Up to Bonner. Well, Ebony Hoffman just set up down on that block and never moved. Catchings loses it. Here comes Johnson. Mercury on the run. Tarazi wanting to score. Nope, but she will go to the line. Second foul on Bevel Aqua. Well, the Phoenix Mercury need Diana Tarasi to be offensive-minded. She's got to be in the attack mode. A lot of times you think shots like that aren't going to fall, but you can't think that when it's Diana Tarasi taking the shot. So Tarasi, an 89% free throw shooter at the line. 4-2. 8 of 29 in the two games so far for Diana Tarazi. Lisa Swanye comes in, so does uh, Pondexter, who went for a moment. Tarazi in the Western Conference Finals, she was 6 of 16. In game one on Tuesday, 5 of 17.
So Rozzi called for the push inside. So Diana picking up her first foul of the game. Two. Penny Taylor still sitting on the sideline. But the 6-14 mark of the third quarter for Corey Gaines was saying, we've gone a long way with Diana Taurasi not fouling. Got to be pleased with that, especially with her having to go to the bench early in game one. Yep. Catching's off balance and in. Tarazi a little bit late stepping up to meet her. Catching's doesn't need to settle for the three-point shot right now. She's getting to the paint at will. What has slowed down Phoenix to this point, the third? Well, I think it's the rebounding. A lot with the rebounding and the team defense. You look at the double team on Diana Tarazi. They're taking the ball out of her hand. Honor to Smith, Angela a tough shot as the shot clock runs out. She's in double figures and the lead is six. You know, in that last possession, Indiana cannot be discouraged by making the Phoenix Mercury use a full shot clock. That's a victory in itself. Moore runs down the rebound, gives them a new shot clock here. Catchings to Hoffman. A little bit off balance that time. But Indiana back on defense. Hondexter to Rossi. Nope. Douglas has been quiet here in the second half. We're going to call the reach on Tarazi before the bucket. Diana's second. Penny Taylor set to check in for Corey Gaines as we take this break. Step away from U.S. Airways Center. Third quarter belonging to the Fever as well. Back in Phoenix and a reminder, this should be a great one. Brett Favre playing his old team. The Packers taking on the Vikings. 8.30 p.m. Monday Night Football coming your way on ESPN. Uh, that is one not to miss. Speaking of football and the IHOP man, Larry Fitzgerald in the house tonight. He's not eating breakfast. He's talking to Heather Cox right now, though. Yes, we've all seen Larry has some very good hands at Larry with the Arizona Cardinals. You do have a bye week this week. So what are you planning on doing Monday night? Oh, I mean, who's not going to be watching the Green Bay Minnesota Vikings game? I mean, uh, I think everybody in the NFL, everybody in the country has been waiting for that matchup. And it may be a special game for you. You actually grew up in Minnesota where a Vikings ball boy for a couple years. Now that you're playing, are you allowed to root anymore for any teams other than your own? I'm not going to lie. I'm still a closet Minnesota Vikings fan. I know a lot of the guys on the team, you know, Adrian Peterson and uh, uh, Jared Allen, a lot, of, a lot of good relationships with the guys on the team. But I want to I want to see the Vikings do well and uh, also Greg Jennings, too. Larry, congratulations on your season a year ago. You guys had a stunning run to the Super Bowl. Because of that, I would have guessed very high expectations coming into this season. Off to a one and two start. So far, what's missing from this team? Well, I can't pinpoint what's missing, but, uh, you know, we had some good couple of practices this week, and uh, we're, we're poised to get back on the right track. Uh, you know, there's, there's, no, there's nothing like winning, and uh, we need to get on the right track and do that. From one athlete to a group of others on the floor, what have been your impressions so far of this basketball game? Well, these girls are ph phenomenal athletes. I mean, I really admire their ability to come out here and play in uh, these kind of conditions and this kind of atmosphere. Um, and I'm just here to enjoy it and, and taking the, the talent. All right. Well, best of luck to you throughout the season. Thanks for joining us. Back to you, Terry. Thanks, Heather. Those are the biggest diamond earrings I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, what a receiver. Brett Favre, Monday night, taking on the Packers, three-time MVP, ten-time Pro Bowler, and uh, that one will be a great one. Had a great one last week with the game winner. Yet again. Down to the final seconds, that drive was, was about a, less than a minute left. Yeah. yeah. That, that was incredible. Hetty Taylor, by the way, picking up her second foul as Tarazi takes a rest. And it's a nine-point Indiana lead. Swan Ye knifes through, kicks it out to Taylor, who goes to the corner. Pondexter had a shot change. Good defense by Kedji. Here is Tamika. 
Davenport off the glass and into making it look easy right now, Lindon's quad. Davenport rarely gets minutes, but she has been extremely productive with the one she's getting tonight. Going down low because she's so much taller than most of the Phoenix Mercury players that are matched up with her. 30 points in the paint. They had 52 in game one. Here they go on the run again. January ahead of Taylor who doesn't foul, but she got hit. 13 point lead. So that's Penny Taylor at the other end. Will they call time? Yeah, they got a call time out here. She got hit right in the nose. And heads straight to the locker room. Listen up, listen up. Oh, the elbow. Inadvertent. Uh, Brown January inadvertently catches her with an elbow right in the face. Three thirty-three left in the third here. You got a 13-point lead to Rozzi back on the floor for Penny Taylor. It's been a big night for Tamika Catchings, and she has led this 7-0 run, largest lead of the game for the Fever. Jessica Davenport has had a huge presence inside. Pondexter trying to force the issue, got it back off the glass and in. Few and far between for Kathy so far. But she and Tarazi without Taylor, at least for the moment, are going to have to take on more of the load. Oldie the foul inside. Her first. Well, Kathy Pondexter had 21 points in the second half in game one. She's being more aggressive in the second half right now in this third quarter in attacking the basket. She's staying after it with it. She's not she's trying not to let this game slip away. You know most coaches right now would be telling their team if they're down by 11 and make it 12 the defensive end. We've got to do it at the defensive hey. end. Two H get with the five. No three three H get with the five. Three. Having watched Corey Gaines for a couple of years now he's probably telling his team push it up offensively make this attract me. Well, he would like to do that, but what he's having to do right now, Terry, is call offenses. It's something that he did not want to do in game three against L.A. He wanted them just to get up and down, but because Indiana is rebounding, controlling the tempo, he's having to call the offense. Three on January on the reach. That's three on her. And the fourth team foul on Indiana. So both teams now over the limit here in the third quarter. Catchings, good anticipation to January. Douglas never quit on it. The lead is 14. Tarazi. Often they went a run. Tarazi's still down. Not hurt, but just late getting back. And Catchings will go to the free throw line. That's the second on Oldie. So every phase of the game right now, Indiana outplaying Phoenix. Well, Diana attacks the basket. Felt like there was contact. She's just looking at the officials like, hey, can I get a call? But you do that, and Indiana knew it, and they attacked with numbers at the other end. Well, Indiana's given the Phoenix Mercury a little of their own medicine. Every opportunity that they get in transition, they're taking advantage of it. Taking advantage of just about every phase right now. They really are. And Lynn Dunn has got to be pleased with the contribution that she has gotten from Jessica Davenport. Davenport has been a huge present blocking shots or really deterring any penetration in the paint. And then offensively, when there's a switch, switch and a mismatch, she's going to score. They've outscored Phoenix 23 to 10 in the third quarter. Tarazi called for the walking violation. And Phoenix just entirely out of sync. Rover, Rover, Rover! When's the last time you saw the Mercury entirely taken out of their game like this? Well, when you think you're this late in the third quarter, they've only scored 55 points. 
when you're going against a good team that's playing the defense the way the scouting report reads, which Indiana's doing right now, double teaming Diana Taurasi, coverage of the own ball screen, except for right there. Taurasi pulls up for the three. They're four of 16 in this quarter. January, got it. Big three to make everyone sit down here in the arena. Now, Katie Douglas and Tamika Ketchings are going to have to do a terrific job on Kathy Pondexter and Diana Taurasi. Bonner can't get it to go, but the foul on Davenport. And the first on Jessica Davenport, the third-year player from Ohio State. Don't forget, this is game two, best of five, and we go from here back to Indianapolis for game three. Four o'clock Eastern Sunday, WNBA shoot around at 3.30, kicking it off, and then you've got game four on Wednesday if necessary, and game five back here in Phoenix Friday. Let's go home. Uh-huh. Or go off Ebony, pop her. And Lynn Dunn knows already that they have sold, and I'm told now, 16,000 plus tickets already. And no large groups or anything like that. Just they sold 16,000 plus. They have a sellout entirely on Sunday afternoon. We even got word there'd be Pacer players there, and they bought tickets. They didn't ask for free. <laughs> Catchings. Foul on Douglas. Just the first on Katie Douglas. Tamika Ketchings has been so successful in attacking the basket. Instead of settling for that outside three-point shot, she needs to keep with attacking the basket. She's gotten whatever she wants when she does that. Mm -hmm. Tawana Bonner, an 81% free throw shooter. It's a team that shot 86% from the line throughout the season. Best ever in the WNBA. the minute mark here in the third the push from behind they caught Tangela Smith and that is four on Smith and remember they're over the limit so they'll go to the free throw line Lori Gaines gonna make a move and go to Nicole Oldie what do you gain what do you lose when Oldie's in and Smith is out well you get size you get more more of a physical presence inside yeah, but I think what you lose is Tamsula Smith has that ability to hit that trail three-point shot mm -hmm. and uh, Oldie is that's not that's not part of her game and remember Penny Taylor in this quarter elbowed in the nose ran right to the locker room Heather do you know more absolutely she's still back in the medical area near the locker room what I can tell you is that two doctors have been brought in in addition to the original one that went in there as long as as well as the athletic trainer I've been told that she's bleeding profusely from the mouth has been cut up quite a bit from that elbow to the mouth they think all of her teeth are intact they don't know whether or not she'll return she's the toughest player on the team uh, but it is very doubtful guys. so hit in the mouth it looked like uh, appeared to be in the nose but it, that, that whole area the face area there so they work on her in the locker room Douglas takes it away not only do you hope she's okay but that's uh, that would be a huge loss for Phoenix Hoffman inside head position very little chance to run in this game for Phoenix Tarazi the air ball when you talk about the loss of Penny Taylor that's a lot of their big scoring it comes from Penny Taylor and Dewana Bonner and now without Taylor right now they could use her because Corey Gaines had planned even to play in her a little bit at the four position which and she could now with Tansel Smith in foul trouble yeah with the big three on the floor Pondex of Tarazi and Taylor Hoffman as Tarazi just backs away they get the ball inside to Ebony and Diana doesn't challenge her 
The, fe the Indiana Fever, Terry, don't look fatigued to me, not as much as I thought they would. Wow, what maybe, a shot. Maybe a big shot by Tanika Johnson as the buzzer goes off here in the third. A little momentum, perhaps, but outscored 29-18 in that third quarter by the Fever. Phoenix for game two of the WNBA finals joined by Corey Gaines the head coach of the Phoenix Mercury and Corey Penny Taylor one of your stars still in the back being treated bleeding in the mouth if she can't return how does your strategy change well I got Dean Cappy still I got a lot of other players uh, right now I don't know what's wrong with Penny I uh, hope she'll be all right uh, she's not coming back right now which is a little fearful for me because Penny's real tough uh, but we'll, get, we'll take care of it without him. What's the biggest puzzle that you need to solve to win this game in the fourth? Uh, right now, we're not stopping the ball back in transition. They're getting easy shots. I mean, they're attacking us. Got to stop it. Coach, thank you. So they've turned the tables. Indiana has controlled the tempo. They've run. Tarazi, look at the numbers. She's got 14, but hasn't shot well. Pondex for only six. Taylor's out of the lineup right now, so you lose a lot of production with her. How do they turn this thing around? Well, I think it's that middle player, Happy Pondexter, has got to step up. She did in the fourth quarter in game one. She's got to be more of an offensive threat. I asked her at shoot around, why would it take you so long to get started from the first half to the second half? And he, she said, Coach wasn't calling plays for me. Hey, Cappy Pondexter, you don't need plays called for you. You can create your own shot. Indiana has only turned it over six times in the game. They've out-rebounded Phoenix 30 to 24. Awfully tough to run if you're not winning the battle of the boards and not creating turnovers. Foul on Nicole Willingham along the baseline, and Brian January will go to the free throw line. Well, how about 24 of the 29 points Indiana has points in the paint are coming from their post players or driving in the paint or getting to the free throw line. It's paying off for Indiana to continue to attack. January, an 85% free throw shooter, buys the first. Tarazi getting a rest. And they list Penny Taylor as questionable right now with a lip laceration. And that's what Heather Cox told us a moment ago. And they continue to work on her in the locker room. Pondexter around that double. All the good ball movement. That's great ball movement by the Phoenix Mercury, but also it was good defensive rotation by the Indiana Fever. But Phoenix, they read where the opening was. That's a shock. The bench points tonight, 26 to 20 in favor of the Fever. And Phoenix won that battle 45 to 18 in game one. Douglas wants it. Kelly Mazzanti in the game now, guarding Katie Douglas. January hit one a moment ago, not this time. One and done, and here come the Mercury. And the foul as Tamika Johnson brings it down the lane. Phoenix does a nice job of moving, recognizing the double on the on ball screens. The skip pass to Nicole Willingham, who then notices that the defense rotates over. She makes one more pass to Nicole Oldie. Very unselfish basketball. Fourth foul on Breon January. Tarazi still getting a rest. Mazanti on the floor. First we've seen of her, the six-year player out of Penn State, she can score. She can shoot the three. Back comes Catchings, who was just a, one assist and three rebounds away from a triple-double. It's never happened in the finals before. Only one time in the playoffs. That was Cheryl Swoops back in 05. Got to make the free throws if you're going to make a comeback. You got to score with no time on the clock. But I'm very impressed with Tamika Catchings. As long as she continues to stay aggressive and attack, she doesn't have to settle for the outside jumper. Be patient and it'll come to her. Catchings using the clock now. Under five, underneath. Great look. And the bucket by Jessica Moore. There's another assist. Catchings has 10. Tipped out, stays here with 18 on the shot clock. So she only needs two more rebounds and she'll have a triple double. Right. Pondexter's going to get a rest. Tarazi back on the floor. 
So you still don't have your big two together. The reach on Tully Bevilacqua. That's the third on Tully. Corey Gaines is having to rotate and split up, not having Cappy Pondex and Dinah Taurasi on the floor at the same time because this would be a situation right now where he could use Penny Taylor, and he doesn't have her since she has the injury to her mouth. Oldie. The help from the weak side in the block. Davenport came over to swat it away. Jessica Davenport is making her presence known, blocking shots, being big inside. Moore, left-handed jump shot along the baseline. And Oldie, the rebound. Catchings, swatted it away. Swanye runs it down. Swanye could take Davenport off the dribble if Lico Willingham had cleared out. Bevilacqua holding Diana Tarazi, and that's the fourth foul on Tully Bevilacqua. The size that Jessica Davenport has brought to the Indiana Fever has made it very difficult for anything easy inside the paint for the Phoenix Mercury. Boy, seven minutes and 41 seconds left in this one, and Phoenix got... Phoenix has 66 points. They averaged 97 a game in the playoffs, 93 all year. The question was asked, could Indiana play as efficient offensively in game two as they did game one? They have shown that they have yep. improvement because of catchings not settling for jumpers, but driving to the basket. Nicole it, Oldie picking up her third, Carolyn. And they've also improved their defense. Catchings, quick first step, got another one. And she went right around Tarazi to do it. What a difference from game one to game two for Tamika Catchings. Smith somehow finds a way inside around Ebony Hoffman. I think that when you get the assignment of Garden the MVP, the leading scorer in the WNBA, you get hung up with just defense. Today in game two, Tamika Catchings came with her offense as well. Bevilacqua, the miss on the three, and it'll be Phoenix basketball. Heather, what do you know about Penny Taylor? Well, Terry, there's still quite a sense of urgency in the medical room where Penny is being treated. The immediate issue is stopping the bleeding of that lip laceration, which they haven't yet been able to do. General Manager Ann Myers has joined the two doctors treating Penny. They continue to get additional medical support to try to give her the best treatment possible in there, guys. Wow. Still trying to stop the bleeding. That's That's been a while. Palazzi can't believe she wasn't fouled on that one. 21 minutes ago, that incident happened with Penny Taylor when she went to the locker room, and they haven't stopped the bleeding yet. Diana Tarazi, 4 of 17, the MVP in the WNBA this year. Offensive foul called, the moving screen. They're going to get Ebony Hoffman. It's three on her. Hondexter back from Mazzani. But if you're the Mercury, you can't trade buckets right now. You got six minutes and 20 seconds. Diana Taurasi, you watch, you have Tamika Catchings on you, and then anytime you're looking for anything, you're getting at least two or three players on you. All right, we're going to get an earful from Lynn Dunn right now. The blocking foul on Catchings. Is that a ball? Help me! How is that a ball? He can't run over. Hey! Well, Tarasi, or, uh, the, Tamika Ketchings tries to jump up and get in the path of Tarasi. The official saw it as though her feet were moving. She wasn't set. Third foul on Ketchings, and Lynn, you have no fouls to give. Next one, and Phoenix is shooting. Only one team foul on the Mercury right now. And Tarazi just bodied Katie Douglas going around that screen. Third foul on Diana Tarazi. Well, Tarazi was all over Katie Douglas there. Catching's a huge night. Closing in on the first triple-double ever in finals history. More importantly, they're up 82-68.
Under six minutes left in game two of the WNBA Finals presented by Adidas. 82 to 68. Indiana with the lead. There you see Penny Taylor back on the floor as we check out our HB photos of the WNBA Finals. This was the play. Rian January clearing out, going to the hoop, and with the elbow right to the mouth area and took them at least 21 minutes to stop the bleeding. I and mean, just a moment ago, she came out on the floor and the crowd reacted, and there we are with a live look at her now. Don't know whether she can come back yet or not, but she's back on the bench. 14 in the game so far tonight. She had 23 points in game one. She has instant offense off the bench. So I know it's a good sign to Corey Gaines to know that he can go to her if he needs to. Speaking of Corey Gaines, what do you think he told them in the huddle right now? You got under six minutes left, but you do have time. You've got to pick up the tempo of the game. You've got to score early. Every opportunity you get, you've got to push, and you have to keep Indiana off the boards. Hoffman inside. Tarazi lost it off a fever, off a catching, so it'll be Phoenix basketball. And you know Taraji, even though she's 4 of 17 on the night, she's not going to shy away from the big shots down the stretch. Hondexter takes it down the lane and gets it in. Taffy's been quiet tonight. Phoenix has to take the first available shot. They've got to look to attack. We're told by Heather Cox that Penny has told, Penny Taylor's told the trainer, if it gets close here, I want back in. I can go. Want a bonner. Picks up her second. Third team foul on Phoenix. So it's a 12-point game. Reminder, Major League Baseball continues Friday. AL Central, the White Sox taking on the Tigers. So Chicago and Detroit coming your way 7 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN and on ESPN 360. We head toward the playoffs. The miss, and here comes Johnson. The thing that Indiana has done as well is they've evened up the free throw attempts. In game one, Good it was look. Phoenix that went every time. Nice pass to Con Dexter yeah. inside. That was and a nice with the bucket. For Bonner down low. Good find for the rookie down low. Jump, hook, blocked by Bonner. Here comes Pondexter leading the break to Johnson. Off the glass and in. Quick timeout, then done. It's a single digit game with four and a half minutes left. In the playoffs, some teams will, and some teams won't. What an athletic play. Someone's team will make the extra pass. Somebody's team won't let pressure affect performance. That team will seize the opportunity. And they won't let go. That will be my team. ESPN's presentation of the WNBA Finals is presented by Adidas. Impossible is nothing. And in part by IHOP. IHOP's gone NFL. Try the all-pro lineup only at IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy. It's actually cooled off out here in Phoenix. It was, what, 108 yesterday or the day before? It's in the 90s now, not too bad. Four and a half minutes left, and they're... On their feet, they were on their feet throughout that entire timeout here in Phoenix, sensing a run, a comeback. It's been an 8-1 run, and Indianapolis just one point in the last three minutes. The Mercury has come charging back to make it a nine-point game. Game two, best of five WNBA Finals. Lynn Dunn has Telly Bevilacqua on the floor. She wants veteran leadership that can make good decisions in crunch time, something she thought she should have done better. Oh, turnover. The end 
of overtime, though, she wanted to she, she looked back at it, so that's a tough position to put a rookie in. To box two. Box two. So Lynn Dunn setting up the defense here. The Mercury with Penny Taylor still on the bench, but she may be able to come back in. Hondexter to the left hand. Willingham the glass. No. Tipped up. Fresh 24. Taraji's not going to use it. Well, they had catchings ahead of the pack and couldn't get it to it. Rebounding is going to be the deciding factor of this ball game. Big difference in free throws in game two. Uh, well, the Phoenix Mercury were plus 19 in game one. It's very even today. Under five on the shot clock. Sutton Brown inside got loose. Good look from Catchings. Yet another assist from Tamika Catchings. 11 in the game. Hondexter. Got it. Got to figure a way to stop Indiana at this end, though. Smith trying to stay with catchings to the left hand. Got it back, knocked to the deck. Out of bounds. Mercury basketball. Phoenix can continue to run this curl play with Pondexter context, curling off. What the Indiana Fever have to recognize is that's like an on-ball screen. The post player has got to help. Johnson, tough shot in the lane. Not sure that's one Corey Gaines would want. Tamika goes maybe 5-3. You notice Indiana has started now. Instead of taking the quick early first shot, they're using the shot clock. The clock is their friend. It's out there on their side right now. Good roll, tough pass. Not going to get there. Here comes Tamika Johnson. Tarazi, look out. Offensive foul on Diana Tarazi. Brian January stepped in. That's a good call. January gets her feet planted. She's set. That's a charge. Four fouls on Diana Tarazi. And Corey had that exasperated look as he brought him back. Now he's halfway out on the floor with the glare. It's a different look it. now. Then I can do. He's not saying anything, but he's saying a lot. He's saying you know a lot. I mean. Look, they say looks are, are worth a thousand words. So a nine-point lead for Indiana On offense. as we listen in. It's all right. Take your time. This is what I want. Kathy, she's the one. You play the three now, all right? Kathy, right here, you drove to the side. You're the one. I want the five. It's like last leg. So it's four, two. That's you, me. Every time down is what I want. You said it, Tans. All right? You're coming off. Meek, you stay here. You may get help, may float up. Go. You give her the lane. You float up right here. Tans will pop back. All right? Give me something to the basket. Make it good. Right, we got right here. Let's go. Defense. One, two, three. Defense. Talking offense, no shock there, right? Well, it looks like what he's done is he's moved Tamika Johnson to a wing position and let Kathy Pondexter run the one. With this offense of what they're trying to run in transition, I would look for an on-ball screen by Tansla Smith. She can screen and pop for the three, and LaCole Willingham yeah. could post up down low. The to give. They've got a full... Indiana out of full timeouts, but they do have a couple of 20-second timeouts. So 2.22 left, and a nine-point lead for Indiana on the road. Trying to Elbowed in the mouth, hasn't returned, but she told the trainer she is available. But we approach the two-minute mark and a big possession for the Fever. Hoffman. Three seconds called on Ebony Hoffman, and it'll go back to the Mercury. Lynn Dunn's chance to give the look. 
Taylor, by the way, chose not to be stitched up in the locker room. She wanted a chance to get back into this one. Tarazi and one. She's been looking for the call all night, and now she gets one. This play starts from an own ball screen, and then Tarazi is attacking. You've got to stop her penetration. You can't think that you can just stay with her. You let her penetrate in, she's going to score. And look, the bench loves it. Four fouls on Ebony Hoffman. Tarazi misses the free throw. Another 89% free throw shooter who misses. Catching. Uh-uh. Starts the break if they can get it out. Tough defense by Diana Tarasi on Tamika Catchings. Pretty good defense by Indiana to get back there, too. Mismatch down low. Tarasi wants to take it in. Can't. Willingham the rebound. No. Diana with the try. They stayed with it. The lead is five for the Fever. Game one was a classic. Game two is shaping up to be a great ending, at least. Five on the shot clock, a minute left in the game. Sutton Brown, great look from Katie Douglas. Got to stop the ball in transition, because she can do that right there. Pondexter in a hurry. Again, a five-point game. But we're under a minute to go here, Carolyn. Well, right now, the Indiana Fever need to be patient. Do what has gotten them this far. Be patient and then attack. You either get a shot in the paint or you get yourself to the free throw line. Under five, again on the shot clock. January swings it to Hoffman. A challenge, tough shot. Catchings the offensive rebound. And a fresh 24, you got a foul right here, and they do. I said this game would be decided by rebounds. In the previous possession, Phoenix Mercury had chance after chance. Well, on the, for the Indiana Fever, you've got to make sure that you're aware. Make yourself available to give yourself, your team a chance for offensive rebounds. Remember, they had a foul to give. We just told you that in the reset. Now they don't, and Tarazi's going to stop the clock with the foul. And that's five on Diana. On the January to the line. As Taylor watches, Phoenix has a full and a 20-second timeout. And what Indiana has done a great job of is attacking the paint and really working on the interior of Phoenix's defense. They've also done a nice job. Whenever Diana Taurasi has had a look offensively, there have been double or triple teams, so she hasn't gotten very many open looks. Big free throw, that one. Makes it a seven-point game. Han Dexter challenge. Willingham, uh-uh. Douglas going to come down with it, and she's fouled. She'll go to the free throw line with 14.5 left. And this place has gone absolutely silent. You know, I'm surprised that Corey Gaines didn't call a timeout and advance the ball. He, do, he usually doesn't. He doesn't, right. Good shot, Cap. But it's an opportunity for you to draw something up, especially when you've got you know, three-point shooters like Diana Taurasi, Tangela Smith. I don't know if you want to risk putting Penny Taylor in, or do you just concede that the Fever have this one? Douglas, the free throw. It's an eight-point Indiana lead. What, what, how big would this be? To steal one on the road in Phoenix, and then you go home, you can wrap it up at home. The next two in this best of five are in Indianapolis. And the Indiana Fever have shown that they are very good at home, especially the way they played against the Detroit shot. Tarazi the follow, but a tough night for her. The lead is seven. They'll call a timeout with 6.5 left. But Lynn Dunn 
saying, we're going home. Okay, we're going line now. Catch is inbounded down here. Well, they're going line first, then they're going home. And uh, even up the series at one game apiece. So they've already sold, as we said, over 16,000 seats. That'll be a sellout in Indianapolis on Sunday. And what a big time win here to steal one on the road in game two. Well, this is huge. And with going home, having one game, like you said, they could, they could tie up the series, win the championship at home. But you've got to believe that what Phoenix is going to do, number one, is they're going to take care of Penny Taylor to have her back. They haven't had her for the majority of this second half and that's scoring that's point sitting on the bench that'll, that'll be and she's going to go to the locker room right now you know, that'll be a big question mark coming into Sunday's game whether or not Penny Taylor's healthy but the other thing that Indiana has done is they have even the score when it comes to getting to the free throw line they also battled on the boards rebounding wise that's a hard foul by Kathy Pondexter It'll be Douglas going to the free throw That's line. Flagrant. Oh, that's a hard foul by Cappy Pondexter. But do you remember first foul, Katie Douglas on Cappy Pondexter in game one? Cappy got a little frustrated, thought that it was a little over aggressive, that Katie Douglas was a little over aggressive, and she threw the basketball, hit her in the back, and was called for the technical. You got the T. Yeah, you're right. Douglas, the free throw. So the question about whether or not Indiana could continue to play at this pace to stay a much lower scoring game than game one, which was 120 to 116 in overtime. But, you know, Indiana didn't shy away either. I mean, they, they're not going to hold the basketball. They're not going to use the clock every time now. That will do it. This series is tied up at a game apiece. Lynn Dunn has taken the Fever into Phoenix and won game two. Well, the question was, could the Indiana Fever play at the pace of the Phoenix Mercury? I'm convinced that they can. And the thing that Lynn Dunn wanted them to do was attack the paint. They did exactly that. Tamika Catchings won away from a triple-double. She had 19 points. Nine rebounds and 11 assists. Ebony Hoffman, another big game. 16 points, five rebounds. Tammy Sutton Brown with 14 points. They had six players in double figures. Let's send it over to Rebecca Lobo. Tamika, eight points on Tuesday tonight. One rebound, shy of a triple double. What was the difference for you? Uh, just being aggressive. You know, I think, um, like I said in the beginning, you know, first half came out, they started keying on me early on, and then after uh, after that, you know, just trying to just ball out to my teammates. But I think as a team, we did a great job, held on to the lead down the stretch, and that's all that matters. Phoenix averaging 97 points again in these a game in these playoffs. How were you able to limit them on the defensive end? Defense, you know, uh, my rotation was there tonight. We did a great job. And I think we did a good job on Diana, even though she got her points. Kathy went off on us late, but you know, I think we watched the tape. We knew what we had to do. Um, last game, first game. They had, what, 12 offensive rebound, 24 second chance point. Tonight, I don't know how many they ended up with, but I think we did a better job. All right, Tamika, thank you. Terry? All right, Rebecca, so Lynn Dunn and the favorite Tamika catching, they go back home, they feel like they have the edge right now. Well, and they do, especially still in one on the road. They could finish the series in Indianapolis. Game three is Sunday. We'll see if uh, Penny Taylor will be set to go in that one. Coming up next, the 2009 World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. And the finals continue. ESPN 2, Game 3, 3.30 Eastern with WNBA Shootaround on Sunday. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Carolyn Heck, Heather Cox, Rebecca Lobo, our entire crew. I'm Terry Gaines.